Now this morning, I'm going to take your little vessels and we're going to launch out into the deep. This is not something for a brand new Christian. This is not something for someone who is nominal in their faith. This is something that's going to take you out of the far reaches, out of the kiddie pool, into the depths. And I hope you'll follow along with me and accept the message as for you as a mature Christian. Sometimes Christians need meat, and this will be meat for you. So as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're called basically to do two things. And those are, we are to do and we are to wait. Now think about that for a moment. You're either doing or you're waiting. And neither one of them are necessarily evil. Some are easy. Some of them are, some of us are called to march into duty and fight the fight down in the valley of Jezreel or go down into the valley to fight Goliath. Some of us are called to do that. Some of us are called to go with David into Ziglag and recover all that was lost, but some are called to stay by the stuff. And the reason they are called to stay by the stuff is like in David's story, the warriors are worn out and they can't go any further and they can't go into battle like the younger ones, like the strengthened ones, and so they have to stay behind. But whether you're called into the battle of conflict to do or you're called to wait and be patient and wait in that patient box with the sentries, both of them are not easy because both in doing and in suffering, we soon discover our own weaknesses. What's it say in the verse? Out of weakness, we're made strong. Now that's something we can all profess that we have. Do you have to look very far to find your weaknesses? Everybody has weaknesses. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're mightily strong because you lift weights and you work out. Good for you. You still have weaknesses. Maybe it's not a weakness of physical ability, but we all have weaknesses. And it doesn't take us long to discover what those are. And as soon as we say we go into the march, then we immediately cry out, who is sufficient to do these things? Look at the Apostle Paul. Paul in the greatest fight of his life, cried out to God and said, God, please remove this thorn from my flesh. It's too great for me. And God said, oh no, no, no. My grace is sufficient for thee. Because in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. So why don't you just take a moment and say, God, thank you for my weaknesses. That goes contrary to us. But it's through weakness. See that? Through weakness. They were made strong. Patience is one of those great graces that's hard to come by. I talk to people often about patience. It's almost an obsession of mine. Patience. And it's one of that rare fruit of the Holy Spirit that you find evident in a lot of people's lives. We are so impatient. I can fall into that category too, though I pray God bring that fruit of patience more into my life. It is easy, easy to become impatient. And it's particularly easy to become impatient if you're one of those who no longer have the strength to go into battle, but you're left behind to watch over the stuff. You are the supply line. You are the one who is supporting those who are actually in the battle. You are back here and the missionary is out in the field fighting and you're back here supplying the money and the need for them. But sometimes it's because we are suffering that you just can't do it anymore. So to both do and wait, if you can find someone who can do and wait, you found a rare breed of a Christian. Remember in the book of Nehemiah about Nehemiah going through all that trouble and he's under threat about building the wall and it says in one hand they had a sword and in the other hand they had a trowel. So they're working on the wall 
with a sword in their hand and their eyes up because the enemy's about to come and try to, try to tear down the wall. That's a unique Christian. Because most of the time, we either have to focus on the doing or we have to focus on the waiting. And it's hard for us to do both at the same time. Here in this glorious book of Hebrews, chapter 11, we find mighty men and women of faith, renowned in their faith. They are called out because of their faith. But I don't want you to forget that they were men and women of like passions as we are. It doesn't matter which person I name in this list, whether it's Abel or it's Noah or it's Abraham or it's Sarah or Jacob or Isaac or Moses, and I can go through the whole list. We certainly know David's weaknesses. We know Samson's weaknesses. I mean, they are highlighted in neon colors for us in the Bible, but it's just not those two we'll point out. I can show you from the scripture, every person named here had something in common. They were all weak. But, do you see the verse? Out of weakness. We're made strong, quite weak. Some of them weaker than the weakest of us. But they show up in this chapter because they were, lay, they were able to lay hold of something that we need to lay hold of if we are going to be as strong as they were. And what's the first thing this chapter tells us? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is futile for us to try to do anything at our own strength. It is futile for us, for us to try to do anything absent of faith because we will fail. Now, there's all kinds of, of advocates to try to get us stronger. Just watch some commercials or listen to your doctor. Because they will say, take this medicine and it will make you stronger. Now, I'm not critical of medicine. Many of you are on medicine. I have to take medicine literally to stay alive. And I know many of you have to, too. If you stop taking your medicine, my body will attack my organs. But I'm not going to depend upon medicine for my life. I'm going to say, okay, doc, I've got to take this. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take it by faith. I'll take it by faith. But you listen, they'll say, well, you want to be stronger? Then eat this and eat that and take this and take that. I go through the store and I'm looking for headache medication and I can either have Tylenol or I can have extra strength Tylenol. Now, why would I want to settle for just Tylenol when I can have extra strength Tylenol, right? Something just to get you stronger. That's what the whole idea is. You need to be stronger. And if you'll take extra strength Tylenol, it'll fix your headache in two minutes instead of 10, I guess. I don't know. But I do know that the means for extra strength is not a pill, but it's at your disposal. So I want to just talk to you about two things this morning. I'm going to talk about the doing, and then I'm going to talk about the waiting. So let's talk about faith makes people stronger for their doing. Now, your first doing, your first responsibility is to love and obey God. Obedience is hard for us. It's hard, especially against the flesh. We are natural rebels, if you put a sign out that says, do not walk on the grass, you'll find somebody who will just because they were told not to do it. That's just the natural rebel in us. By our nature, we want to do our own will. By our nature, we want to complete the thing. We don't want to ask for help. We don't want anybody. You, you would rather, some of you, would rather drive along around lost for an hour than stop and ask anybody for directions. Am I right about, I see some going, yeah. 
Not me, but him. <laughs> Not me, but her. <laughs> That's just the way we are. It's part of our nature. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. And who among us has done that? Who among us outside him has done that? Without his help, we can't do it. It comes by faith. Faith alone gives us divine strength. Faith alone helps us obey. Faith alone helps us to reach that point of holiness that he wants. But the current doesn't go that way. You have to keep paddling. I preached a message a few years ago. Remember when I brought that big oar in here? And you just have to keep paddling and you have to be working and you have to keep going because if you don't, the natural current is going to send you the wrong way, especially in this day and this age with everything against your Christian faith. If you just relax and take it easy, pretty soon you're going to be down the river. Not up the river, down the river because that's the way the current goes for us. And pretty soon you will pick up the world's language and you'll pick up the world's ways and you'll pick up the way the world's thinking. You have softened in some of your morality because that's just the way the natural world's going to take you. And they are not going to end, end their assault. They are coming after you to give you propaganda and make you change your mind. What's the only thing that's going to help you keep you in the fight? Your faith. And how does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You may get tired of me preaching it, but as long as I have breath, I will preach it. The most important thing you can do in this age is read your Bible. And if you neglect it, you're neglecting yourself. Faith alone can give you divine strength. So as this current goes against you, and you, have the, you are trying to go north, but you're facing a great cold north wind, and you have to stay on the course and you have to keep the course no matter how much is against you. It's like trying to climb Mount Everest and everything's fighting against you to make it to the summit and get to the top, but you have to keep going. And what is that temperament that will keep you going? What is that resilience that will keep you marching and going into battle? And Hebrews 11 tells us it's our faith. Well, what if it involves the loss of money? Will you keep going? What if it means the loss of health? Will you keep going? What if it means the loss of ease and honor? What will you do then? I'll tell you what you will do if you have no faith. You'll quit. You'll give up. You'll turn back. You'll take the easy road. But God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must persevere. You must continue no matter what. Because the right course at some point is going to bring you ridicule. At some point, it's going to cause you to be called a fanatic. You're going to be called a hypocrite. You're going to be despised as a fool. And without faith, you won't be able to make it. You'll quit. You'll lay down your armor. But if you trust in the living God and you take up that cross he's called you to bear and it causes you shame or it causes you ridicule, if it causes you to lose your good name for the cause of Jesus Christ, then you just rejoice in that and be glad. For great is your reward in heaven. It takes great faith. It is not an easy road. It's not a smooth road. If you're traveling a smooth, unbumpy road with no potholes and no washouts, then you're probably not on the right path because it's a hard road. Old song just comes to mind. Y'all, some of you remember it. It's not an easy road that we travel. We're pilgrims. You think it was easy for Abraham to pick up and take everything and leave, not knowing whither he went? You think it was easy for Abraham to take up Isaac and offer him as a living sacrifice to God? Do you think it was easy for Jacob or easy for David or easy? It was never easy for Moses, it doesn't seem. But he kept going. Faith is weakness clinging to strength. 
Will you let that sink in? Are you weak? Thank God I'm weak. Thank God I've got some weaknesses. It proves I'm human, but it gives you the pathway to prove you are divine. Thank God. Because, what's it say? Out of weakness, we're made strong. Immediately makes me think of the guy in Acts chapter 3. He's sitting there by the temple about the third hour, and Peter and John are coming by. Remember the story? And he makes a prayer. Now, he's not praying to God. He's praying to Peter and James, Peter, Peter and John. And he says, hey, can you give me some alms? Can you give me something? And Peter's answer was, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And what happened? That man got up walking and leaping and praising God because it's in our weakness that God's strength is made perfect. There was, a, there was a blind man sitting on the side of the road and the Lord healed him and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now let me pause there for just a minute and let's digest that thought. According to your faith, be it unto you. What if the Lord slapped you with that, with that condition? and said to you, okay, you've been talking to me about this, and you've been praying to me about this. Let's just make it according to your faith. Would you get your answer? So why are you waiting so long to answer? Because I'm waiting for you to think about it. Where's your faith? Your faith has to be in God. And so it's out of this weakness that prayer can be made strong. You believe in God and He is a prevailing God. You believe in His promises and you plead them. You believe in the Holy Spirit who will help you. You believe in Jesus Christ, whom the Bible says maketh intercession for us. You believe in the throne of grace that if you come, you will obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. You can come with faith alone on your feeble knees and the Lord will answer your prayer. But it takes faith. Faith. To pray without faith is just a formality. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I would, you know. Our Father which art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Love. Just formality. Just saying words. But when it's by faith, it changes it. God says, Ask. Ask. Why not ask? I preached on you that, that over and over and over again. Why not ask? But also just don't ask. Why not believe? I've got two master's degrees. I'm not bragging. I've got two master's degrees. I've got a master's degree in, in, in uh, psychology with mental health. And I've got a master's degree in theology. I'll tell you what, I would rather trade those two master's degrees and those two subjects that took me a good while to get and have a master in the art of prayer. That I could get a hold of God every time I needed Him. And I can. But it's my lack of faith that keeps me from being able to do it. Because he's willing to answer. He's willing to hear. The God you believe and serve will not refuse any prayer of faith. He'll listen. Believe in prayer. Because if you believe in prayer, then you will pray believingly. It's because we don't believe in prayer that we fail to pray. Because if you trade with God, you're much better off than any Wall Street baron who goes and trades on the stock market tomorrow and perhaps makes hundreds of thousands of dollars of one day. You're much better off going to God and getting hold of the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and says the earth and all that therein is mine. Why not go to him? The scripture says, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Prayer makes you rich toward God. And if you have a poor heart, 
with poor faith and your faith is so small, that's when Jesus says, look, if you even have the faith the size, the grain of a mustard seed, if you'll come to me believing that much, then out of weakness, you'll be made strong. Faith is such a great force. I wish I could get you to see it, but it's here in Hebrews 11. If you'll just read it, great faith. And God has that same ability that he had in those days. I mean, faith for Noah to build an ark. Faith for Abraham to go out and not know where he went. Faith for Jochebed to give an Amram to raise that boy Moses, not fearing the commandment of the king. Faith for Sarah to give birth after she was past age. That same faith is available to you. Has God short-circuited, short changed us? Has God somehow no longer offering us that same ability that they had just because we live in a different time and an older age? I say nay, nay, nay. That same power is given to you. That same strength is given to you. He, he can help you if you find yourself under the depths of some surging wave of evil. I'm telling you, he can deliver you. We have to rise above it with faith because you can be plunged into some darkness and I don't know what dark valley you're, you're in. I don't know where you are. I don't know your thoughts and your intents. I don't know what you do during the week. It's none of my business what you do. But I'm here to tell you if you're caught in some sin like a trap and you're given over to alcohol or you've given yourself over to gambling or you give yourself over to pornography and that's a secret sin that you keep to yourself and nobody knows about it and is a dark demonic pathway for you to go if you are caught up in that and you're beneath those waves and some people have caused themselves to be so drowned and that filth that they are not even to raise themselves up to common, common morality. They're down here. Here's common morality. Here's common morality. We walk in a higher plane, hopefully, but some people get so caught in sin, they're down here, and they think that's normal. They think having some relationship with a child is normal. There is such filth. And there's only one way out of that filth. And that's by the grace of God and you going to God and praying and say, God, you have got to get me out of these dark corridors because I have no hope without you. And it comes by faith. And you know what God will do? He'll send you some light. You think about that submarine? And I hate to use this illustration of tragedy, but I will. Forgive me. You think about that submarine that sunk and they didn't know what they would do. And of course, we all heartbroken and thinking about what it must be like to be 12,000 feet underwater and air running out. There's some people like that spiritually. Their life is running out. Sin will choke the very life out of you. Do you understand? You're on borrowed time. It's only by the grace of God you're still breathing. If God rewarded you according to your works, you'd already be dead. And I'm not putting myself on this pulpit, even though it's raised higher than you, I'm no higher than you. I'm raised up only so you can see me. I'm not raised up because I live a holier, better life than you do. I have weaknesses too. But God's delivered me from those. And it's only by faith and continuing to battle. And so fight, 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 fight. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Even if you slip back, don't give up. Faith, faith, faith is the mantra. Now, secondly, quickly, faith not only helps us to do, faith helps us when we suffer. Many people suffer, suffer such pain in daily life. Uh, sitting here, you may look cheerful. You may come into this building, you put on a face and everybody thinks everything is wonderful, but you may have a back pain. You may have a 
heart pain. You may have shortness of breath. You may have some disease, cancer eating away at you, and nobody knows it but you because you have the right not to tell anybody. And you sit there in pain, pain of loss, pain of relationships, pain, pain. So you must endure by seeing him who is invisible. You must joy in God because if you don't joy in God, you will have no joy at all. Certain saintly ones, are God deposits in them some great physical pain. And the only source you have for any hope is that God will deliver you. I, I go to a personal example. I don't know that there's anything more troubling to your faith than going under the surgeon's knife and not knowing if you'll wake up. That it might be the last time you see your loved ones on this earth. And you go under that knife, and I've got a scar to prove it. Most of you have never seen it, but it goes from here to here. And if you look at me, maybe not so much in this shirt, but if I put on a t-shirt, you can see. The, it's not that I'm pudgy, <laughs> It's my liver and my spleen so swollen that it just shows up. I'll never get rid of it. It's marked for the rest of my life. But you know what it reminds me of? My weakness. But I can be strong. And there's nothing like going into that surgeon's knife. And then you wake up and you realize, hey, I'm alive. I made it. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. And so if you're going through some pain and some recovery or some uncertainty and you're suffering, and maybe you're out there and you have to navigate that little sea alone by yourself, and everywhere you look, you see no other ship. Everywhere you look, all you see is waves and darkness. But then all of a sudden, if you will look close enough by faith, you'll see him come walking across the water in the storm. And you'll say, it's Jesus because he's the only one that can help me. And that great hour of faith, the great Lord, comes into that lonely ship, and he is, as the Bible says, your Jehovah Rapha. You say, what's that? The Lord that healeth thee. One last point, maybe you're here and your suffering isn't physical. Some of you are suffering physical pain. I know what you've told me. I see it, I know. And your only hope is faith. But some of you are suffering that dark shadow of pain that isn't rel relatively easy to recognize. And that's mental depression. Some, have people, some people have a constitution in their life. They're just raised that way because of their upbringing or their culture or something's gone on. Or maybe it's a mental illness where you just suffer depression, you're not alone. And usually that depression, bipolarism, whatever you want to call it, comes after you've had this high and then you hit this low. And one minute you're up here and the next minute you're down here. And I point to you, Elijah the prophet. For Elijah the prophet won that great battle of the prophets of Baal, slay out 450 of them. And as soon as that was over, he called fire down from heaven. And what happens? Where do you see him next? Sitting under a juniper tree, scared to death that Jezebel's going to catch him and kill him. And he's sitting there completely depressed, saying, God, kill me. Same guy. You don't think there's depression in the Bible? There's depression in the Bible. I'm here to tell you your only cure for depression. Are you ready? The only cure for your depression. I'm speaking as a psychologist, a trained mental health counselor. Are you ready? The only cure for your depression is faith. That's how much God tells you faith is strong. Out of weakness. Is your weakness depression? Out of weakness. Is your weakness anxiety? Out of weakness. Is your weakness fear and phobias? Out of weakness, they were made strong. How were they made strong? You tell me. You tell me. By faith. I'll say it. You say it. How were they made strong? By faith. By faith. You know what you need? You need faith. Faith. 
How do you get faith? Listening to me. It doesn't have to just be me. It can be any preaching of the Word of God. It can be any teaching of the Word of God. Take it on yourself. Read the Word of God. But your faith will grow. And as your faith grows, then your weakness will become stronger because you're locking in to the Almighty God who the Bible says in Psalm 146 verse 3, His greatness is unsearchable. Wow. Well, my time has ended. And I have a lot more I could say. And I could preach on and on and on. Maybe sometimes I should. But I still believe from the point that I started preaching, there's a point of diminishing return. I think I've made my point, so I'll leave it at that. But I'd like to say this in closing. If this is, by chance, my last confession of faith to you, if this by chance is the last sermon I ever preach to you, and it could be, I hope I'm here next Sunday. I don't have a death wish. I've got no premonition. I'm just making the point. If this is the last words you ever hear me say, I want you to hear this. God wants you to live by faith and God wants you to walk by faith. And that's the only way you can please Him. You must have faith that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I would cut you short. I would do you wrong. You should fire me if I ever tell you there's anything but faith that will see you through. How are you saved? By faith. How do you live? By faith. How do you get prayers answered? By faith. How do you overcome depression, alcoholism, anxiety, depression, bipolarism? How do you overcome it? You overcome it by faith. That's the key. That's the answer. That's the answer to life. And it's so easy. But it's so hard.